hey homies homies uh whatever <laughs> very basic bible we're gonna hit it up okay jesus is in the midst of his public ministry he was just talking to his disciples he's been doing tons of miracles religious leaders don't like him and now let's see what he does today ready set go verse 25 at that time jesus said i praise you father lord of heaven and earth because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children these things is probably a reference to uh, the miracles for the miracles that were performed in you okay he's hidden the wisdom the plain and precious truth yes father for it was your for it was what you were pleased to do. Uh, hiding things from the wise and learned and revealing to the children. God is pleased for that. All things have been committed to me by the Father. No one knows the Son except by the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Who does the Son choose to reveal him? All those who are weary and heavy burdened. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Mm -hmm. Let's see, go into the yeah, There it goes. All right. So at that time, is that that time, a little time later? I'm not sure, you know, uh, some other time maybe. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. He's supposed to be resting on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry, began to pick some of the heads of grain and eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath. Picking and eating grain, unlawful on the Sabbath. It's work, I guess. I'm not supposed to work on the Sabbath. Jesus answered, haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? David entered the house of God. And he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which is not lawful for them to do, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read the law that the priests on Sabbath duty in the temple desecrate the Sabbath and yet are innocent because the priests work on Sunday? I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. Mm. If you Pharisees, teacher of the religious law, had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You would not have condemned the innocent, Jesus and the disciples, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. Okay. I like over here, New Linear Translation, for the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. He's over everything. <laughs> Going on from that place, he went into their synagogue. Okay. Same people, synagogue. And a man with a shriveled hand was there. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus, they asked him, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? Man, he's getting pounded today. Jesus said to them, if any of you, excuse me, if any of you has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will you not take hold of it and lift it out? How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Therefore, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was completely restored, just as sound as the others. But the Pharisees went out and plotted how they might kill Jesus. Look at this. Looking for a reason to bring charges against Jesus. Now they want to kill Jesus. He keeps breaking the, he broke the Sabbath and break it again. I don't know. Aware of this, that the Pharisees wanted to kill Jesus, Jesus withdrew from that place. A large crowd followed him. And he healed all who were ill. I mean, like he always does. He warned them not to tell others about him. This was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I have chosen. The one I love in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. This is to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah. Jesus, large crowds following him. Jesus healing them. Okay. I'll put my spirit on him. He will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. No one will hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wook he will not snuff out till he has brought justice through to victory. In his name, the nations will put their hope. Pretty cool, huh? 
Then they brought him a demon-possessed man who was blind and mute, and Jesus healed him. Who are they? Just some people, I guess. So that the man could both talk and see. All the people were astonished and said, could this be the son of David? They were like, wait, over here, New Living Translation. The crowd was amazed and asked, could this be Jesus as the son of David, the Messiah? Some of, them, some of the crowd starting to get it. Some of them, not so much, right? But when the Pharisees heard this, for some reason they want to kill Jesus, they said, it is only by Beelzebul, the prince of demons, that this fellow drives out demons. Remember, they said that earlier in another chapter when he was driving out people. And this last chapter, Jesus, to the disciples, when he sent them out, he told disciples, they're going to, they call me Beelzebul, you know, so this fellow drives them out demons by Beelzebul. Jesus knew their thoughts <laughs> and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. Every city or household divided against itself will not stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he's divided against himself. How can this kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your people drive them out? So then they will be your judges. But if you, if it's by the spirit of God that I drive out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. That's like, come on, listen, guys, please. Or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. And so I tell you, Every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven, either in this age or in the age to come. Make a tree good and it's fruit. If you're wondering about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, remember in my show notes, I got tons of people who have very deep teaching, exegetical, nuanced, didactic, super detailed, like really smart people that can tell you about this stuff. Then, okay, so go search on the and my and my show in the show notes underneath YouTube. Go to those websites and search for Matthew chapter twelve verses thirty one, thirty two. Yeah, you know. All right. Make a tree good, and its fruit will be good. Or make a tree bad, and its fruit will be bad. For a tree is recognized by its fruit. That's what he said earlier in the Sermon on the Mountain. You brood of vipers. That's what John the Baptist called the Pharisees. How can you who are evil say anything good? For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Oh, man, he just called them evil. A man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. Good fruit. And an evil man brings the evil things out of the evil stored up in him. But I tell you that everyone will have to give account on the day of judgment for every empty word they have spoken. For by your words, you will be acquitted. And by your words, you will be condemned. Man, he's just going off on the Pharisees. Okay, guys. I have my timer. He's not going off on them. He's trying to get through to them. He's trying to explain. He's trying to say it in a million different ways. But guys, I am not Beelzebub. Yeah, I, I, it's okay to heal people on the Sabbath. Stop wanting to kill me. I'm the son of man. I'm the Messiah. All right, guys. <laughs> I get all worked up. Here we go. I will see y'all in the next Bible reading.